Today in this episode of Cars Plus, we're going to cover a few more of the things that we found that are not correct on this gram or need to be restored and explain some of the mistakes that have been made over its life, showing how somebody has made the car stay on the road or not really known what they're doing or just adapted whatever worked. So stay tuned for some information on what to, you'll find when you are going to restore a car, a project car, and it'll probably be the same for you. Here we have the radiator assembly with its support taken out of the car. Now having looked at the radiator, it's obviously going to have to be sent out. I have a feeling it's probably going to have to be recorded. If we ran around the back, we would see that. But that's not really the point here of what we're going to show. What we're going to show is that this radiator surround has been taken apart and poorly put back together. That's causing the entire car front to actually lean to the driver's side. If we look right here, we have a hole. That hole is approximately to the center, a half inch above this piece. Notice on the opposite side where the hole is. So somebody has taken this apart, we know, and put it back together and done it incorrectly, causing the entire front of the car to lean this way. When we come around to the side, part of the reason besides I know that the dimensions are wrong, you can see the welds here, here and here, that were done. Those welds aren't factory. Graham is one of the first manufacturers in the automobile industry to have adopted spot welding. This was actually spot welded together when it was originally made, and you can see some of the original spot welds. So we know, one, because it's misassembled, it's also bent up, and two, because of the style of welds that it's incorrect. And with that bending, it caused a lot of problems with the car. Now let's look at some of the other things that are wrong here. We have these two little bolts. These bolts, see this one's fastened in. This is the one for this side. It's come undone. They're supposed to be welded in place because there's no way to bolt up the bracing on the front of the car without those welded in place, assuming your radiators where it's supposed to be in the car. So it'd be a big problem. So this would have to be welded back in. Now all of that can be fixed, but there's not a lot of point because we have one over here that I have that is in much better shape. It's got a couple little minor extra holes to weld up, but it's not a big deal. But this shows you the two parts welded in place, shows you the correct relationship on the sides. And also when you come around and you look at it, like I said, there's a couple extra holes we'll have to weld up, but not a big deal you can see the original spot welds are in place on the part. Now, lest somebody think I'm wrong about Graham being one of the first companies to spot weld, we're gonna show you from a reprint of an old book, a shot where they tell you Graham is one of the first companies to actually do this. It's a very advanced company when they were making this car, even though they were having trouble staying in business. Now we're gonna show you a couple more things that we know that were a problem because of this being misshapen. This is the hood latch assembly out of the car. Now right now it's square. It was not square when I took it off the car because of this problem it had actually been bent and cocked to this side so the person who had worked on the car at the time had bent and cocked it so it would actually work with the misshapen holder. So I spent a bunch of time and straightened it. This is going to go out to sandblasting and it'll be put back to what it's supposed to be. It'll be painted black and it will now be square like it has to be on the car. So we know that was a problem. Using the one we're going to use in the car, I'm going to just kind of put these parts on here. And you see there's a brace there. You also have to have braces going across here on it. That's from the car. The problem is, is the brace going from here down to the center on the frame and from here down to the center on the frame, they're both missing. Also missing from this car, and we'll go to the actual car frame and show you where it mounts, here are the holes in the frame. These are where the two braces I was telling you that are missing go. 
These parts are vital to the car. The car company did not decide, well, we'll just put extra parts on there. They're actually tying the front of the car to the frame. So you need to have both of these braces in here. And down on the bottom, there is a piece that they actually they go into that they are then, we have nuts and lock washers that hold them. Now you see the piece is not here, but we're gonna show you on the combination coupe what that piece looks like. Here you see a view of the cast support bracket that goes on the bottom of the tubular member on the frame. That's where those two diagonal braces, which you can see the ends of the threads and the nuts here on the combination coupe. That support bracket, we don't have it. But for the owner, uh, Mr. Bob might actually have one of those still because I cast up a couple of these a while ago and because another owner needed one and Bob paid for a couple of them. So he might have one that we can use that's an exact copy made off of another part that I have here. But you must have that part. Now those two rods that go through it, we can make if we can't find, but we do need to have those. This is all part of tying that entire front of the car together. The other thing that you might be interested in, anybody watching this, is there is an aluminum oil cooler, obviously not original, that you can see next to that bracket. I add this to the supercharged cars here in Arizona because to be frankly honest, it gets hot obviously at times and having additional oil cooling does not hurt the car. And as you notice, I've hidden it and you wouldn't know it was there if we weren't showing you this bracket. It's a very nice addition to the car and is certainly better for the car than original. Here we have the front of the car laid out, disassembled, and we're gonna show you several things with it. First, we'll come in on the fender on this side and show you down here in the bottom, there's a lip. And that lip is set back just a bit and comes basically straight up. That's the lip here. When that lip is in place and the rest of the parts here are in place like they're supposed to be, to put the headlight in and out, it's sort of, put it back in, it's sort of a tip and push job. Same thing for taking it out, but you're reversing the movement. However, we know that somebody who worked on this car didn't know how to do that completely because we're gonna go look at the other fender. You'll notice here, they couldn't get the headlight back in. So what did they do as a solution? They bent the lip down so they could actually get the headlight in there. Easy fix, we'll unbend their problem. We'll put it back in position. And if you understand that the headlight has to be tipped a bit and pushed, then you wouldn't be doing this with the fender. This part here is known by Graham as the radiator shield. We're gonna be using it, it's in beautiful shape. We won't be using this trim. The owner has ordered a brand new one that is being made as a reproduction. That's because this one is cracked, although that could be repaired and this could be plated. The brand new one will probably cost them less money. Real thing I wanna show you though, is how this person installed the fender welting. Whoever did this installed the fender welting completely incorrectly. You'll notice each place there's a bolt. They just cut the fender welting out and squeeze the rest of it together. This really isn't the way to do this. When we get to putting the car back together, we'll probably give you a demonstration on how that should be done. We wouldn't be reusing this fender welt anyway, so it doesn't matter from the standpoint that it was on the car, so what? It only matters because we wanted to let you know that's not the way to install fender welt. There are some things here that we have to straighten. It's bent down the corner, etc. We'll actually straighten that stuff up but this will be uh, sandblasted with a process. It does not warp the sheet metal so that we can refinish the entire thing. One of the things I've noticed in looking at the car, many things were not repaired that should have been. We have a crack right here. This should be welded up because that's only gonna get worse over time. We don't wanna leave it like that. The fenders have the same sorts of problems. We'll show you a little bit of that now. And we can see here, some rust damage. Somebody in the past obviously did not care about fixing the rust damage, they just painted over everything. We'll make a patch panel and fix that up and we'll MIG up any little holes. Now some of this, because it isn't a concourse restoration, we don't have to make it perfect perfect because this is the side that goes against the car, but we certainly don't want to leave it so it can rust like this. So we're going to want to sandblast it, clean it up, put a patch panel in, 
MIG it shut and use some filler just to get it smoothed off enough so that we don't have little pockets that are maintain moisture and tend to rust the car in the future. We're finding that the car was basically done this way. So there are going to be lots of little repairs like that. We also have additional holes that have been put in that will MIG shut along it. But there's something real important here that's missing. Every time you see a double hole in this area, this area, this area, those are hood side supports that are missing from the car. Now they'll be easy to make, but they have to be there because they push the hood sides out. The car will rattle like crazy and you'll basically damage it over time if you don't have the hood supports. So we're going to show you what the hood supports look like. Here we are at the combination coupe looking at the passenger side of the engine compartment. You'll notice I'm pointing at one of the hood supports. There are three of them along the side there that I pointed at. Each one of them is a metal bracket. On each one of those metal brackets, you'll see there's a rubber donut that's riveted to it. You notice when I push on the hood side, you can tell that they're pushing out, pushing the hood side directly against the fender welt, which is sandwiched between it and the fender. That means it holds the shape of the hood, gets rid of any unnecessary rattles. If you didn't have that, that hood side would be a problem. Here we're looking at the passenger side inner fender liner that has been removed. It's a panel. The panel comes out on the passenger side so that you can do like valve jobs. On the driver's side it is actually permanently attached to the fender. You can see here that the unit has been sprayed red or maroon right over black. So if you're paying attention you can see the black on there. And I'm pointing out how it is removed from the passenger fender. It just bolts in place. If it were not removable, doing a valve job on the car would be near impossible with that size of that fender, even if you take the hood side off. Now, as I'm pointing out here, you can see the difference between the black and the maroon red. It should be black. It's going to be refinished that way. You'll also see me pointing along the crease shortly, and you'll see a crease on the left-hand side that you can kind of see because of the lighting. There I'm pointing at the crease. That crease should not be there. We will straighten that. Somebody decided to crease it just to get it in and out. That is incorrect. That will be removed. Not a hard thing to do. Here we are now looking at the front of the car itself. You'll notice that there are wood pieces on these two metal brackets, one in front of each tire. Those are particle board wood pieces somebody's put on the car. If there were wood pieces there by the factory, they would have been hardwood. Well, there aren't wood pieces there. They were used as fender supports. Looking at the top of the engine, we see that there are a few studs that are not removed. Those studs are in there so tight that they're going to be removed at the machine shop because even with an impact stud remover, they wouldn't come out. Here we are looking at the front bracket on the passenger side, noting the wood that's wrong, using just a speed square that you'd use in building a house, but it lets us see that that particular bracket compared to the frame is essentially square. In a moment, we're going to demonstrate what happens with the bracket on the opposite side of the car. Now, as I said, those wood pieces don't belong there, and at this time, they're actually glued in place. They're going to be removed. Graham used washers to shim the fenders to the right height. See, I noticed that that is actually glued in place. It's going to go. You wouldn't want particle board anyway because particle board is not waterproof. And obviously, if you drove this and it rained, water would get on that board and the board will come apart and expand and rot. Completely useless method of holding the fenders in the correct position. They will go in the near future. Flipping to the other side, you see the same thing has been done. Same board method, and the board shouldn't be there. Now we're going to show you with the speed square. Pay attention to the light at the bottom of the screen. You'll see weird gap down there, with, and the light kind of shows there's a gap. That thing is not square at all, and we're going to have to not only remove it, we will have to correct its mount to put it back on square with the car. So this particular one has been bent back quite a bit on the driver's side.
Here we're looking at the removable cross member underneath the gram, and right in the center of it is the rear motor mount. And it kind of looks like bubbly burned caramel there. As the Brits would say, that's past it or perished. It's going to have to be replaced. It's done. So we will need to do a new motor mount or have that one revulcanized. Here we're looking at underside of the driver's footwell area, a spot that often does rust out. And you'll see, unfortunately, the repairs here were to screw sheet metal into place and throw some Bondo down and say, good enough. We'll take that out, make patch panels, and repair this properly. Here we have one of the horns removed from the car. Dirty, but painted black, right? Well, here's the underside. This is the way the car has been done. Things are painted from the top down here, and nobody cared of what happened to the underside. So you'll see the rust, etc. We'll take care of all that, but the whole car is turning out to be have been done this way. Here we have the exhaust manifold right there, the intake manifold right there, that are for the car. They've been removed, all the parts taken off of them, and they're going to be sent out and be jet hot coated and finished in cast iron. So they'll look like cast iron, like original, but never again will they have to be taken care of, won't rust, etc. It'll be perfect for the rest of the life of this car. We have one missing part that's going to go with at the same time, and that's the exhaust pipe collar there. That part is still on the car, on the exhaust pipe, and I just don't want to cut the exhaust pipe apart. When I pull the engine, I can just take the pipe out and slide the collar off. Here we have the rear license plate removed from the car. Super long bolts were used. This flat br bracket was used. None of this is actually Graham. The bracket's close, but we're going to show you the parts that go on a gram, complete with a uh, measure at the same time so you can kind of see the size, because it would be real important to find the correct parts to hold the license plate instead of this particular setup. Now, if we can't find the correct parts, I can make them up, but it's always easier to find the parts and not have to expend the time to make them, because that tends to cost more money. Here are the correct license plate parts that hold the license plate on a Graham Spirit of Motion car. This particular piece is 10 and a quarter inches long. It's a six inch ruler sitting here. But you notice this is something you may not realize. There are no rectangles raised up on the other bracket. And it's necessary because they use little carriage bolts. And so you have to clear carriage bolt heads. That's why they're the raises. So as I said, we could build up a bracket like this real easy. This other bracket is the lower bracket, which grabs onto the bottom of the license plate right here. And this is three and a quarter long. And I'll turn it. And you see it looks like this. It's got a little hooked bottom. So these are the parts that we need to get a hold of. The carriage bolts and washers, they're just easy. And these happen to be old ones. They're just uh, sprayed with silver cad. They could also be plated just as easily. But needless to say, these are sitting on the shelf waiting to go on my two-door sedan because that's where they're from. But we're going to need a set for this particular car. And I can make all these, but if we can find them, it'll be less time than me making them up. Here we have a series of parts from the front end of the car, mostly, that have been removed. They're all going to go out to an industrial sandblaster that we use when we're going to do large numbers of items. I have a little miniature sandblaster for doing delicate work. I have a handheld one, and I also have a serious one. But when it comes to this level of a project, that'd be a hell of a lot of sand around here and or other media, because technically it may not really be sand. But we're going to let the industrial sandblaster take care of this because it's just so much to do. And this is just the beginning. This is just a very small amount of the vehicle. Eventually the entire car will be stripped off. We're just not going to do it all at one time because right now we're consistently interested in basically getting the running gear done. We'll worry about body parts for the most part later on. Looking at the gram at this point you can see a lot of things have been done. We haven't even covered all the things we've taken apart. But I'll tell you in this episode of Cars Plus 
that's important to think about if you're working on your own project car. Don't do what I'm doing, which is taking apart the entire car. Most people that do that, they end up with a basket case and they end up selling the car because they become overwhelmed. Only somebody who's experienced at restoring cars or doing it professionally should take the entire car apart like I am going about doing. And as I've said, we haven't shown you many, many other things that are actually apart on the car right now. If you're doing it at home, your first restoration, do it in small pieces at a time. Take off one item, completely finish it. The best way to eat an elephant, remember, one bite at a time.